Hello, everyone. So today we'll be covering the second part of the Zoho CRM developer series focused on client script. So today we'll be going through a number of advanced use cases, relatively advanced use cases than the ones that we discussed in part one. So this is what we'll be um, discussing in today's session. For those who are new to client script and those who haven't attended part one, we'll be seeing a short description, uh, an introduction, and the bare bones basics of client script. We'll be doing a quick recap of part one. We'll be seeing more advanced use cases than the ones discussed in part one. And then we'll open it up to you know, Q&A from all of you guys. <clears throat> so client script. So as the name suggests, it's a script. It's written in JavaScript. So at Zoho, we have Deluge, which is our own uh, in-house proprietary scripting language. But Deluge runs mostly on the server side. But JavaScript, since client script is more of a client side feature, uh, it runs using JavaScript. So like I mentioned, uh, the scripts are written in JavaScript, and the functionality completely runs on the client side. So the main use of client script is to extend the current functionality of CRM. So based on your industry, based on your use case, you might want to want uh, you know, a few, um, let's say, additional features that you want added to your CRM user interface. So you can use client script and JavaScript to extend the basic functionality of CRM to fulfill your use cases. And since it's on the client side and it's on the use on the um, uh, you know the UI of CRM, it can the client scripts can be triggered and run in different places and at different times. And just because the name is client script, it doesn't uh, it isn't limited to only client side features. From client script, we can also access server side APIs as well. So in today's use cases, we'll be looking at all of these. So like I said, where client script can be used. So in the user on the user interface of CRM, we have multiple pages right? that the user has access to. So these are the pages in which client scripts can be executed. Uh, last time when we had part one, uh, the support for these features were a little bit lesser. So now we've added support for some of these pages. So feel free to try it out if you haven't already. I'm sure you'll be able to you know, uh, implement some good workarounds or extra features that you might want to use in your CRM. And when client scripts are triggered. So we saw where the client scripts can be triggered. So if you're in a page, each page has an event which can be used to trigger client scripts. Uh, the modules fields can be used to trigger client scripts. Different pages have different events. And obviously, uh, different layouts are used for different uh, modules you know, in different pages. So you can customize your use case and write it for based on your page events, your field events, which layout you want it to run in, and you know so much more. And if you're using blueprints, you're using tags, you're using wizards, you're using Canvas, wherever you want, you can use client scripts and uh, trigger your JavaScript code. So since we are, there's a lot to cover, um, I'm not going to go much in detail through the documentation. Uh, wherever it's needed, I'll be showing, showing it to you. But the whole documentation is available online. Client script has a very in detailed documentation that you'll be able to use. And where all the features that I just mentioned, you'll be able to find those in the documentation. The Kaizen series. The Kaizen series is a series that is focusing on Zoho CRM. And in Kaizen series, we have yearly updates targeted at client scripts. So a lot of the use cases that we'll be going through today to make it easier for you guys to follow along you know, when you find the time to try it yourselves, most of the use cases, as well as the code snippets that I've used in the presentation, as you'll see in a little while, have been taken from the Kaizen series. So you'll be able to you know, get on board with client scripts as soon as possible. So let's do a recap of part one. In part one, we discussed simple use cases, like the ones you see on the screen. So auto-population of field values, for example, filling the age when the date of birth is filled in a different field, displaying alerts or errors or messages. Say, for example, if uh, you know a mandatory field hasn't been filled, data validation, if, say, two phone numbers are supposed to be entered and they don't match, retrieving data across CRM modules. Like, for example, when an order is being placed and the contact is linked in a lookup field, 
if you want the contacts address to be added to your orders shipping address you can do that with client steps filtering lookup field values so when you uh, you know when you click a lookup field you have all the values listed so with client step you can add a filter so the values that are listed when you click the lookup field are already filtered based on the value that you want we saw how you can lock enable disable show hide uh, fields as well as buttons so based on say for example the the stage of a deal or maybe the profile of the user who's accessing a record say for example an administrator versus a standard user so you might want different permissions for fields like this so you can enable or disable fields or buttons or even mask sensitive data such as phone numbers you know or social security numbers and whatever based on your specific needs and in the list screen say for example uh, there's a task that's been pending for a long time in the list view you can change the appearance of the records so they stand out so you can you know uh, take a look at them as soon as possible so these are the relatively simple use cases that we covered in part 1 uh, a lot of this these use cases we will be covering in part 2 but they will be um, a small part of the more advanced cases that we'll be focusing on today okay so these are the the features that we'll be covering in today's session so pseudo fields uh, widgets what they are some of you obviously might have used widgets so we'll see how we can integrate them into client script and how you can show them in multiple ways navigating across pages uh, using client script and obviously sending emails a very important uh, yet basic thing that we need and we'll see how you can do it in different ways and third party integrations so the use cases that we'll be seeing today while they are more advanced than what we saw in part 1 uh, they are uh, they are still basic use cases but based on your industry's needs or your business's use cases you'll be able to extend the same feature that we'll be discussing today to satisfy your business's specific needs okay so let me give you a quick demo of the crm that i've set up for today's session okay so there's nothing nothing uh, flashy i just have uh, a company that sells uh, hardware like phones uh, you know uh, phones laptops and so on uh, we have a contacts module right now there's only one contact through whom we'll be running all our use cases so for simplicity i've just had uh, set up one contact we have no orders created we'll do the or we'll create the orders when we are trying the use cases out and the products we have a number of products that are split across different categories like smartphones computers and peripherals we have the quantity of each product and we have the price of each product so we'll be incorporating these as well in our use cases for today so let's start with the use cases so pseudo fields so pseudo fields like the name suggest name suggests they are not actual fields for example say i want to fill a value in the record but the value that i want to fill in a particular field is based off values of different fields right so i don't want to add multiple fields in a record just to fill that one field so you can create temporary fields and get the input from the user who's creating that particular record and use the values compute the data and fill the data in whatever field that you want to fill it in so this reduces the number of unnecessary fields and it obviously clears up the clutter that you'll be seeing in the detail pages it reduces the you know the designing work when you create the modules and uh, the fields and layouts and uh, pseudo fields is you created using the get input function in the uh, client script apis and because uh, we want a number of uh, inputs we support multiple data types like the text number text area and text list so we'll be uh, going a little bit more in detail in our use case let's go to the demo of pseudo fields so this is what i want to do right so when i create an order you see this shipping label field let me just zoom in a little bit so this shipping label i want the value to be consistent across all the orders that are created so based on your use case obviously this will differ but for my use case i'm going to choose that the shipping label value should have the batch the unit uh, chosen in the order and the warehouse from where the order will be shipping so i 
I could have three different fields and even using client script, I can get the values from those fields and compute them and add them here. But adding them obviously will clutter the, the detail view of the orders, order that's created. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to cre create a client script for this particular use case. So before we get started with that, there are two different ways in which you can create a client script. So for example, let me go into the products module. So under actions, you have create client script, right? So when you're creating the client script, like I said, you can customize it based on which page uh, you want it of which module and the event as well, and whether you want it to be a page event or a field event and what field uh, you want to be changed for the client script to be triggered, right? So if you click, click uh, create client script here, based on where you're choosing the option, some fields will be auto-populated. So if you, uh, you know, to save time, you know, in case you make a mistake, to reduce the chance of making mistakes, I would suggest that you use this user interface wherever possible so that you have uh, a lower chance of making mistakes. See, for example, the page is chosen, the module is chosen, and since the mod, the mod, it's a page event, only page events will be accessible here. You won't be able to access field events. So this reduces the number of mistakes that are uh, possible. The other way, obviously, you click settings, you go into developer hub and client script. So these are the ones that we'll be covering. So you click new script, you have the basic client script creation form here. So you can choose which page you want the client script to be created on. So for this use case, let me go with create because I want the client script to be triggered when the order is created. So I'll click orders. It's going to be a standard layout. So client scripts, like they differ from page to page and model to model. If you have multiple layouts for a particular model, you will have to create a different client script for each layout, right? So to reduce the risk of errors, that's that's how the client script uh, user interface has been designed. So make sure you choose the correct layout when you're creating a client script. And this will be a page event. I want to do it as soon as the page loads. And okay, on load. I forgot to enter the name. Let's, let's say filling label. Great. Okay. So as you can see here. This uh, client script will be triggered when the create when an order is created. So it will be a page event on load when it's uh, when the create page uh, user interface loads. This client script will be triggered. So let me just go ahead and copy the code that I have already. So this is very simple code. Mm -hmm. So let me zoom in a bit. Right. So like I said, I want a particular data format to be carried when this uh, order is being filled, right? So I'm using getting the shipping label field, setting it to read only so that users won't be able to edit it manually, right? And like I said, this will be a pop-up that just shows temporary fields and not actual fields. So get input is the CRM, the client script API that has to be used to uh, use to show a pop-up with pseudo fields. So I'm showing a number of fields here. And like I said, a number of data types can be supported. So I'm using text, number, and pick list here. And since a pick list has to have multiple options, in the list options, I'm passing some other values as well. Right. So we'll get the values from this uh, pop-up and we'll be uh, computing, computing the data. So in this use case, I'm joining them using a, a hyphen. And I'm setting it back into the shipping label field. So let me just save this. Let me just make sure the client script has been enabled. OK, it's enabled. So I just click Run. So this is the page in which the client script will be executed. So as you see, as soon as the create order page loads, the pop-up is shown. The, the pseudo fields with, with different data types are shown. and I can choose a different value. So once I click update label, before that, you can see that the shipping label has been marked as read only, right? 
So I click update label and the shipping label has been updated. So this is much easier than having your user interface cluttered with unnecessary fields. And you can also use this to uh, follow a specific pattern in the data that has to be entered. So I hope this user, this use case is clear. So let's go ahead with our next use case. Right, so we saw pseudo fields. Let's look at widgets. So widgets, a number of you would have already used widgets. So widgets are basically, let's, let's call them mini applications, right? So they are mini applications that can be embedded uh, into the CRM. So some of you would have used widgets when creating, uh, you know, in the Sigma platform when you're uploading a widget to Zoho Marketplace. So here we'll be looking at how you can integrate a widget into CRM and we'll be using client script to trigger those widgets to open in the user interface, right? So the widgets that we'll be using, they are bundles of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript codes. So you'll be able to create these widgets with the ZET CLI. So this command line interface is what we use for creating widgets. Um, I'll, in the, you'll be able to find more detailed uh, steps of how to do it in the Kaizen series that I mentioned earlier. And once you create the widget using the, uh, the command line interface, you'll be able to upload it into CRM and you'll be able to trigger it through client script. So where this widget comes in, in the client script user interface is, um, if you want to handle more complicated uh, scenarios and we want a little bit more control over the design and the functionality, we can use a widget. You can pass data into the widget and get the data out of it and add the result data in your, in the user interface, in the fields, in the forms, right? So for this use case, I've already downloaded the same sample uh, code that you get in the Kaizen series, the sample code that's been provided. So that you'll be able to get started with it as easily as well. And we'll be integrating the same widget in three different client script features. We'll be looking at pop-ups, flyouts, and callouts. Okay. So let me just show you the code already. So this is the zip that was the sample code that's provided. So using the command line interface, when you create uh, the folder, this is how it will look. You won't you won't have all these, but you'll have the, the HTML file created. So once you add your your the net, you link the necessary JavaScript and CSS files using the CLI the terminal CLI uh, command line interface, you just have to validate the app, pack it, and then you'll be able to upload it to the Zoho CRM, and from there you'll be able to access it through client scripts. So let let's go to the client script. Okay, so you go into settings. Click widgets, right? I've already uh, edited the same uh, sample code to work across these three different use cases. So you just click create a new widget, say sample. We'll go with button. The hosting will be Zoho. After you pack, validate and pack your widget uh, file using the, client, uh, the command line interface, you will be able to upload it here. So since this has not been validated, this won't work. So once you validate uh, the widget that you create, you'll be able to upload it. And this will be the, the path to the HTML file from within the app folder, right? So within the app folder, you have widget.html immediately. So this is all you'll, be, you'll have to type. And once you save it, you'll be able to access the widget from anywhere, okay? So now we'll see how we can use these three um, widgets. Let me uh, tell you about the use case where I want this to be displayed first. So let me just disable the, the previous one, right? So in the orders mod module, when I'm creating an order, say for example, I want it to be a multi-product order, okay? So I'm having a subform that shows up based on a layout rule. And this is a normal lookup field. And as you can see, all the products are listed. So you, obviously the user who's creating the order can do it one by one, but I don't like this user interface, right? Uh, I want to choose based on categories and I want to be able to select multiple orders and add them to the sum form at the same time. So we want to filter the products. We want to do multi-select 
and we want to manipulate the subform in a way that you can bulk fill rows in your subform, right? So let's look at how we'll be able to do this. So for example, if you click this icon, you will be able to select it, but this is going to be a single select. It's a radio button, so you'll be able to select only one product. You will be able to filter it, but I'm not really a fan of this user interface. There's just too many steps to do this. So we are going to go with a client script for this use case. So again, I'm going to settings, going into my client scripts. So this will be, again, a client script that will be triggered when an order is created, so on the create page. So I've already created the code, the client script here. Let me just enable this first and show you the code, right? By the way, the client script APIs and the CRM APIs that we used in this, you'll be able to access them here, right? So on the right pane, you have access to both the client script APIs as well as the CRM APIs. So anything uh, related to what you're using and uh, integrating and implementing, you'll be able to access them right here. So let's look at the code. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just getting, I'm just changing the product category. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, where is it? Okay, I'm I'm using a field called the widget setting to choose what kind of widget I want to show so that, you know, to show all three different uh, widgets. And based on the category, so once the product category field is edited, right? Once the product category field is edited, the widgets will be, the client script will be triggered. And from the client script, the widget will be shown. So here is where I'm calling the widget. So first we'll be going with the pop-up. I'm calling, I'm using the widget uh, name here. I've uh, designed the widget uh, how I want it to look and I'm passing the data into the widget. So the product category is the one that will be triggering this client script. And that is exactly what we'll be getting in the value here. So I'm just passing it into the data and I'm passing that to the widget, right? I'll be doing the same for all three different widgets. So let me just run this. Uh, since this is client script and it's running on the client side, sometimes it's a good idea to do a hard reload in case the client script hasn't been loaded into the user interface, right? So, so let me set the widget as pop-up and this is going to be a multi-product order, right? So the uh, widget setting is pop-up, so the product category has to be selected. <laughs> so once we select the product category, you see the widget shows up. So you see that the products are filtered based on the product category. That's one, that's what we wanted. This is a multi-select field, right? And whatever we select, when I click next, it's added to the subform, right? So we're doing all these three functionalities in this one widget. So let me go ahead and show you again. I'm sorry. Okay, so take a look at, uh, just make note of these few things uh, that will be the differences between the three widgets that we'll be uh, going through, okay? So this pop-up, you can't close this, right? Um, you have to close this, only then you'll be able to interact with the fields in the background. That is one, right? The user data will have to be entered. Second, you can't move this, right? It's fixed here, and this is only on this page, right? So just keep in mind, so um, let's try the other type. Let me change from pop-up. Let me call a flyout, right? So again, like I said, it's the same widget, just modified a little bit for each type of uh, pop-up, for each type of widget. So it's the same thing here. But here, you see, this is a flyout. So I'm able to move it. I'm able to access the fields behind it. And flyouts can be customized in a way that you can create it once and you'll be able to open the same flyout or keep it open across multiple pages. So if I want to, I could uh, write it in a way that if the I can close the order page and when I open a different order, I can open the same flyout with the same selection and I can continue the data. So I can uh, notify the pop-up, I mean the flyout with the new data. And based on that, I can, uh, uh, based on the data that's processed, I can uh, you know update my fields, right? So again, 
let me click next and like you see from the flyout the data has been added into the subform so the third type which is a call out we are not going to use it to manipulate the subform fields instead if you see the code this the call out is linked to a particular field right so if uh, i show you in the use case it will make a lot more sense so let's say call out right and let me choose a product category see so this call out is linked to the order value and i've written the code in such a way so the total unit prices of all the products that are selected will get updated into the order value so with widgets you can do both simple stuff as well as complicated stuff like auto filling uh, and bulk filling subforms and you'll be able to design it however you want and you have a choice of how you want the widget to be shown on your zoho crm based on your use case for example if you want a timer to be running uh, from the order creation process till the delivery process you can have a timer running and you can show it with a flyout so it's accessible on all the pages right if it's just here you can use a pop up or a call out in this uh, use case we saw how we can use a widget in three different ways right so it just the sky is the limit and you know uh, you just have to think of you have an uh, you know uncountable ways in which you can use widgets and uh, client script to have your more complicated use cases created uh, let's move on to navigation so right now the use cases that we saw were just in the same screen right so using navigation and clients through client script you can move from one page to another and you can also do so while passing information during that transition right so you can do that using navigation and uh, by sending data through the navigation but one thing you'll have to be very careful about is when you integrate the navigation there is a chance of losing data in the process we'll see how that will happen and we'll also show you a way that's built into client script of how you can make sure that doesn't happen right so let's get on to the use case for this one <clears throat> okay so this use case again this is how i wanted to work so let me see how many products i have for one plus okay i have 100 one plus smartphones so let me just place an order for good smartphones okay so this is going to be for me for charles okay so this is going to be a single product so i'm just choosing it i said one plus okay so one plus and let's say place all 100 orders right so this got placed the thing is that order shouldn't uh, if it had gone through right i want an alert to be shown that the product is low on stock and i want to take the user to the products module so you can restock the product okay so from the order page we navigate to the products page so let me show a client script on how that can be achieved so in client script again i'm going to do it while the order is created so in the orders module for the create page so let me turn off this so i'm going to do a check stock after after order right so just let me turn this on so let's see the code right so once the order has been created so i'm just making sure that it's a single single product order right so the code is uh, lesser so i'm just checking the updated stock and if the updated stock is less than 5 i'm showing a confirmation that is low and if the user says okay i'm taking the user to the products module where he'll be able to restock it and here i'm passing custom data restock right so only if this particular custom data is there in the products module if there's a client script there only if this restock value is there will that script run right so it's not going to run for any navigation that happens to the products products module and obviously along with this you can pass any number of data that you want so here let me say self right so self 
means the navigation will be done in the same page, right? So when the order is being created, if I click save, if the the stock is less and if it's it's mentioned save self here, the products module will load in the same, same tab, which will lose, which will cause you to lose the data that has been entered in the order creation form, right? We don't want that to happen. So since the navigation happens before the save happens, we will lose the data there. So instead of that, let me do blank, blank right? So blank will open the products module in a separate page, right? So I'm choosing the record ID that I want to open in the products module. So I'm passing the record ID. I'm saying that I want the detail page of the record ID to be open from the products module in a separate tab, right? So since this is safe, I've also written a client script for the products module, right? So I'll turn this on and we'll see what we're doing here. So here, this client script will be triggered when the product module, when the uh, detail page of the product module loads, right? That's, that's exactly how we want it. But we want to make sure that it's being redirected from the orders page. So here I'm getting the navigation data. If you have any questions about what this is, you'll be able to you know, check the documentation. Since we are running out of time, I'm just going to uh, bypass that. So we're taking the navigation data, checking if restock is mentioned there in the data. I'm showing an alert and I'm updating the, the quantity in stock for that particular product, right? Right now, I'm just placing it, uh, updating it there locally. But obviously, you can have a third-party integration or an API call here, which we'll be uh, discussing a little bit uh, down the line to actually update the product. So now, now, since that is on, let me. Okay, so let's do an order for one plus again. So one plus, we already have hundred orders. So I'm creating another. I mean, we have hundred products of one plus in in stock. Order. And this is going to be for me. Not going to be a multi product order. So I'm going to choose one plus and I'm going to say 100. So if the remaining stock is less than five, the alert will be triggered. So I'm ordering all the all the products that we have. And if I click save, see, so stocks are low. Do you want to restock? So if I say yes, it opens the, the particular product of the product module in a new, new tab. So if I go here, you see that the data has been saved. If I had mentioned underscore self there, this data would have been lost, right? So you really want to pick and choose uh, what kind of use cases you handle and how you handle it with client script because none of us want any data to be lost, right? So I go to the product module. Since the restock key has been passed in the data, it's asking if I want to restock it. So right now you can see that the quantity in stock is zero. So if the user says yes, Using client script again, I'm just re I'm just adding 20 uh, products to the the particular product, right? So this is how from one page we are moving in, into another page, and we're passing data across the transition, and are using client script to update the data accordingly. So that was a nice use case. Let's go to our next use case. Emails, even though we have a number of uh, you know uh, different saints and messaging and whatnot, emails are basic and the most crucial feature that I don't think we'll be getting rid of anytime soon. So using client script, we'll see how emails can be sent. And we'll see three different ways in which you can send an email. So we already saw how a pop-up can be shown using a widget. So similarly, we'll be showing how an email can be sent through a pop-up. And rather than just a client site, client side sdk will be using crms sdk so we are going to be calling crms backend api from client scripts front end api and sending an email the third one will be using a custom function so custom functions as you know are written in deluge so from a javascript client client side function we'll be calling a deluge function on the backend so obviously sending emails is a very simple use case that we've taken up for this session. But obviously, using these three uh, ways, you'll be able to do any number of things for your own businesses or your use cases. So we'll see how we can send emails in our use case. So okay. So what I want to do is, so in this uh, order two, um, OK. 
So iPhone, okay. We already placed an order for one plus, right? We placed an order for hundred items, but one plus has only 20 remaining, right? Let's say, let's just bump this up to 110, right? So what I want to do is, let's say this order that has already been placed has not yet been shipped. The customer calls and says, no, change my order and change it to 130, right? Let's assume uh, by some uh, way that the order has been taken, right? So uh, what happens is we don't want, we won't be able to ship 130 products, right? So what I want is when, if this is selected, I want a mail to be sent to the customer saying, we don't have enough stock, please change your order, right? That's the use case that we'll be handling. So let me just go into client scripts. I have a client script created already. And since the editing of that particular order is going to be done in the detail page, right? Uh, make note of this, it's not the edit page. We are editing a value in the detail page, right? So this client script will run when the detail page, uh, in the detail page, and it will be when the units has been updated, right? So just let's take a look at this code. Let me enable this, right? So yeah. So I'm just checking if the chosen order count is greater than the current inventory count, okay? And if it's too much, I'm saying not enough stock, and I'm asking a question if you want to email the customer. If chosen, yes, we'll be sending an email to the customer. So like we saw in the widget, we used uh, a pickup, uh, a pick list to choose what kind of a data we uh, what kind of mail we want, what kind of widget we want uh, to show. So just like that, we'll be using a pick list to, to choose what kind of way we use to send the email, right? So I, I have the, that mentioned here. So I have a pop-up, I'm using CRM SDK and custom function okay so for readability i've uh, added the content separately so we're just accessing them in different places so as you can see here in the pop-up i'm just using the client side api and i'm saying open mailer which will open a pop-up on the client side if crm sdk has been chosen i'm using a crm api let me zoom in a little bit i'm using the crm's api and sending a mail if custom function has been chosen in in functions i'm calling a custom function in which the deluge course code has been written in a way that an email is sent okay one thing that has to be kept in mind when you write when you want to send an email is obviously none of us like spam so we want to take the utmost uh, precautions to make sure spamming isn't done using these features so the from email address should always be an official email address right you cannot just hard code any email address you want it will not work, it will fail, right? So the from email address has to be an official email address. See, the from email address. And the from email address is in the function, it's specified that. And the recipient should be a contact who is in your CRM, right? You can't write an email to anybody you want. So not necessarily a contact, but they have to be linked to the CRM in some way or the other. So using the CRM APIs, I'm getting the contact for whom the order is being created. And I'm sending the orderer's email along with this data, right? So the two will be the orderer's email. It's not a random email. If you try a random email, unfortunately it will fail, okay? So let's see how this code works. Okay, so I'm here on the detail page. We saw we have 120 units, right? So I'm saying I want 130, right? So the contact has been selected. The mail setting is pop-up. So if I choose this, not enough stock because it's only 120 there. So I'm saying email customer and we have a pop-up. So this is a widget-like pop-up that is native to client script, right? So you saw that I had hard-coded uh, the subject and the content as variables. But since uh, in this pop-up, you'll be able to access templates, I'm accessing a template here as well. Let me just show you quickly. So the detail page, I'm sending an email. 
right? So here I'm accessing a template instead of sending the hard code is subject and uh, body. The template is loaded. And as you can see, this is the administrator's email address. And this is the con the contact's email address, which has been inserted here through the client script. So for now, I'm just going to hit send. OK. And let's see if I got this. OK. Let's get rid of this. See, so Morgan Frederick, which is my administrator's username, has said said that we have insufficient inventory warning along with the template, right? Let's look at the other use cases as well. So we already have only 120. So I want, again, I'm changing it to 100 and, oops. Let me change this first. So I'm going to use the CRM SDK this time. And I'm going to say 140, right? Sure, email customer. So the pop-up pop that we saw, shows up physically on the, uh, literally on the display. The CRM SDK doesn't show up on the UI, but it's been sent in the background. Let me check if I've got that. See, so this isn't the, the template clearly. So I've got it through the CRM SDK. Let's do the other one. The last one will be the function, right? So custom functions, they are written in deluge. So you go into setup. You click functions, and I've already written my function here, which is taking the re receiver subject and content as a string as parameters, right? And, and I'm just using the deluge send mail function, and I've taken the administrator's user ID so that this won't fail. Uh, one thing that you'll have to make sure when you use functions like this is you want to make sure that the REST API is enabled, right? Because we are using uh, some sort of authentication to send an email. Not anybody can send this email. So I I have to enable this OAuth too. Otherwise, an error will be thrown in client script that we don't have the permission to send this email. So make sure you you know enable all the necessary things before you try this out. So I'm going to say 150. Oops, 150. Uh, let me just choose the custom function here. Let me say 150. And, and OK, email customer. The email has been sent. And we should be getting it soon. Yep. So we've got it. So as you can see here, we don't get the name Morgan Frederick, right? So you'll different um, APIs handle data a little differently. So feel free to try out whichever one suits your use case the best. Okay. So obviously this is only, only this use case is tailored only for emails to make it simpler. But you can use this, you know, you can use the CRM SDK as well as the custom functions to call both backend APIs as well as deluge backend uh, functions from your client side JavaScript client script, right? So let's go on to the Next email. Next, uh, we saw was not a third party integration, but it was a CRM integration within Zoho. But if you want to use a third party product, if you want to use the API of a third party service in your client script, you can do that as well. So let's just see how we can do it. So, one, for authentication, we will have to create a connection. If you aren't familiar with connections, so it's basically a simplified way to fast track the authentication process so that you don't have to authenticate every time. You don't have to pass your authentication tokens with each uh, API call, right? So connections have to be created. The domain has to be marked as trusted. So obviously, we, no, we don't want any uh, you know unsafe API calls to be made. So the administrator of the organization has to mark the third party API as the trusted domain because we don't know where we suppose you're getting a third party widget right once you end, uh, you add it to your crm it could turn out uh, you know to uh, to damage your data we don't want that happening so the api that's being called from your script or your widget has to be marked as trusted only then you'll be able to uh, access those apis right and obviously using the apis the api format and the url you will be getting from whatever api service you are accessing 
right? So we'll just see how we can add a third party integration using our client script. Let me close this. So for the, okay. So the use case that I, I want, when I create an order, if you see, we have a warehouse city and we have a delivery city, right? And the shipping distance. So it's a very simple use case. Once the user enters his, in, the user who's creating the order, enters the warehouse city, enters the delivery city of the customer, the shipping distance should be calculated here. And based on that, I can either do a, a layout rule or, or a validation rule, or even use client script to show an error or stop the order from being processed. That's basically what I want to do with this, with this use case. So we'll just see how we uh, uh, create it. So first, like I said, a connection has to be made. So for this use case, I'm using <clears throat> this service called distance matrix dot API. So if we go into the API guide, the API uh, matrix, I'm sorry. If you go into the distance matrix API documentation, so here you'll be able to see. Find this right. So we are going to be using this API, and we're just going to pass the origin and the destination, and get the uh, data from the API, and pass it into a client script. Right. So I'm just I'll just show you the connection that I've created. So third party services, a lot of them are supported by Zoho, see? So, but unfortunately distance matrix.ai is not supported. So I've already created one. So let me just go into it. So the connection name and the service name can be whatever you want. The connection link name can be whatever you want. And I'm passing when the connection is being created, right? A key will be asked. So the API that I'm calling has to have an API key that has to be passed. So here I'm just passing the key. I'll, what I've done is I'll just mention key. And uh, when I save it, um, okay, right. So when I save this, <clears throat> Right. So here is where I'll have to enter my, my distance matrix dot AIs API key. So once I add this here, I will be authenticated to use the API in my CRM. So I've already done that here and it's already active. So once that has been done, I'll have to make sure the domain has been marked as trusted. So in trusted domains, as you can see, I've already added a trusted domain. So this is the uh, just the domain of the API that I'll be calling, and I've already marked it as trusted. You just have to enter the name, the domain, and that's it. So from here, um, let me go into my client script. So for this will be, uh, again, for the orders creation page, let me calculate the shipping distance. So I'll disable this. Right. Let me show you the code. Okay. So, so long we were working with field events, right? Even uh, for when a field is changed. But here, we ha we have two fields from which uh, you know the values that we are using. So, I have chosen to do this event. page on change will be called whenever in that page changes. Sometimes you need this data uh, all a crime and do certain processing information if you include in a change the client script will be called every time right so i have this as a page event and if the fields that are changed are the delivery city or the warehouse city i'm just passing it to the api right so from the connections i have used the api name that where i entered there the API URL, the key will be passed automatically because I added it when I created the connection. 
I'm ask, passing the origin city and the destination city as parameters. And I'm getting the distance and I'm setting it in my distance field, right? And since I don't want the distance field to be uh, manually entered by any operator who wants to, you know, uh, force place an order, I'm marking it as read only, right? So let's see how this works. So let me go into my orders page. Bangalore, Chennai. So as you can see, uh, since Bangalore was changed, the client script was uh, you know triggered and the field has been marked as read only. Now when I change this, the API will be called and the distance has been filled in the shipping distance field. So from here, you can take it however you want. You can add a validation rule. You can add a layout rule. You can add another client script, like I said, to use this data and throw an error, an error or an alert using this data, which stops the order from being created. So using this, you can use any third party API, whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's a Zoho product or if it's a third party API outside Zoho, you'll be able to use this and call it directly from your client script. And like we saw, we saw how you can access a deluge function through client script. So obviously, deluge functions support connections and uh, invoke URLs. So you can access those uh, third party APIs that are you know added to your deluge functions you can access those deluge functions from your client script as well so we're done with today's uh, session so let's do a quick recap so we saw the basics of client script so pseudo fields temporary fields that you get without uh, and you just get the data and process it without cluttering up your user interface right so it shows up as a pop up you process the data that you get from those pseudo fields and you update it in any field or you do whatever you want with that data. And then we saw how you create a widget, how you add a widget to your CRM, how you display a widget in different ways, pop up, fly out and call outs. And we saw the differences between those three ways of displaying widgets. And we also saw how you can manipulate subforms, uh, subforms as well as lookup fields using those widgets. We saw how you can navigate across pages, pass data between them and how you can make sure that the data you enter, you don't uh, risk losing whatever data you have entered when you navigate across pages. And we saw emails, uh, three different ways in which you can send emails using the pop-up that shows up on the screen and two other ways which happen, which run in the background using CRM SDK, which we triggered from a client side SDK and a custom deluge function, which we triggered from a JavaScript client side function. Right. So that use case, you'll be able to expand it for whatever use case that you find uh, necessary for your business. And of course, third party integrations, how to add a connection and making sure that you mark it as a trusted domain so that it doesn't fail when you integrate with third party APIs. So those are the use cases that we have for today. In this uh, link, we have the first part that Janagi mentioned, as well as the we had a Zoho developer hangout session that was conducted by one of our power users. And uh, that was uh, focused on tips on how to get the best out of client script. So I've linked that as well. And the documentation and all the use cases that we discussed, I've linked them in this document. I just uh, also have the sample code. Yes, sir. okay. So like I said, I've used most of the use cases from the Kaizen series. So the document that you see here, for example, let me open the pseudo fields use case, right? This is the Kaizen series uh, episode and this focuses on pop-up. So see, you have the code here and you have the steps on how to get it integrated. Obviously you will have to make sure that the, the API names of all the fields uh, and pages uh, and modules that you use in those uh, code snippets have to match your uh, CRM's API names. Uh, other than that, you'll be able to get started with all the code snippets that are mentioned in those pages. Mm -hmm.